Just being honest. Just being honest. Nothing but the truth, yeah. Welcome to another episode of CJ Honesty. Honesty. And today we are going to get into a serious topic and it's about overcoming domestic violence. And just warning you, this is an episode where this may trigger some feelings for some people who may have dealt with it or knew someone who who dealt with um, domestic violence um, situation or who's currently going through it. So just letting you know that you may, um, if you're listening, you may feel some type of way, but we will be um, providing ways that w- ways that um, you can help someone who may be going through it or you may be going through it yourself. So I want to get into our guest who, talk about our guest who uh, came all the way from, she's from Australia. Her name is Jasmine Shojai. She is best known as Australia's next top model. She uh, and she won in 2017 through 2018. She is also an an aspiring actress, and her viewers can catch all her behind the scenes footage on in her monologues on her feeds. And when she is not modeling or acting, she loves watching comedy or reading her favorite book on business. Welcome to our show. Well, <laughs> Thank hi, you. I'm very pleasure to be here. Yes. So. So let's uh, let's get straight into it. What yes. what Jasmine? What made you first want to start uh, to get into modeling and become a model? Was that something that you always dreamed of, or? Um. Yeah. Actually, it was like a huge dream for me, and it was something that was just a huge aspiration since I was like a child and the best part is in a way because a lot of people say you have to start when you're really young to get into things but for me and I I felt like talking about this because I think this is very important um I started when I was 21 heading into 22 and at the beginning at least it was about doing something for myself and just you know having a passionate hobby of some sort but like you know still something that i really put a lot of effort into and then it wasn't until maybe a year and a half that i started taking it very seriously and Mm -hmm. turning it into a career because i loved modeling so much but that just goes to show that it doesn't matter what kind of background or what kind of past you've had if you're very passionate about something and you do train and work on it you can achieve so much Mm -hmm. and that's easier said than done but it's still very true so that's something i really wanted to put out there for anyone who's wondering um you know can i really get into something and and make the most of it well the answer is you can so yeah i'm very proud i've never looked back since how was the process of becoming a model like difficult or did it come easy for you oh yeah it was really difficult especially in the first two and a half years where i had this huge drive and i really just wanted to get you know right into it and do so much but Mm. the funny thing is and i i look back i look at the times where i did grow a lot and those times were like entering pageants or doing competitions and those can be like really daunting in a way um Mm. but from a positive point of view I wasn't specifically that experienced in the sense that I hadn't been modeling for like years and years or something like that. And I, but the thing is I had done training. I had seeked, I think at one stage for like a, um, for a pageant, I had done some catwalking lessons a few weeks leading up to the event. So in the end, like I put in all this effort and while it wasn't about, um, you know, necessarily winning it was about growing as well i grew so much of just being thrown in the deep end but even just the whole process Mm -hmm. so i think because it's really funny there's been so many times where someone's just come up to me and think oh you're so 
pretty and you you know you'd be able to do all of these things so easily and then but like deep down i know that isn't true i know there was a whole story and process to it and i think that's something that people really need to understand that's the most case with anyone um but the really funny thing is and i had one of my um, mentors tell me this she said to me like you can have talent which is great you can have natural talent and that's all really good but that alone doesn't get you so far you mm -hmm. need passion you need this drive to train every day in whatever mm -hmm. discipline that you're doing Mm -hmm. And then that's how you move forward. So it's it's really interesting that she said that because I think there has been a bit of a misconception on how on how people make it. I think a lot of people still believe that it's just luck, and um, I yeah. don't think it is. <laughs> that's true. So I I was just thinking, like, what what's your opinion on um, women or even some men who are like consider or IG models? Do you respect that because they're they're processing easier? Well, like it's easy. Mm -hmm. Someone said to me, like, it's easy to take a picture and post it online. Yep. And it is actually so true. Like the whole process of that is, is pretty easy. So I think um, as long as someone knows that, then they'll be able to acknowledge what it means to be somebody who just posts pictures on Instagram and then somebody who just gets out there and does all these things and something really valuable they learn actually in acting um but i think it, it applies to anything it's not really about winning or losing it's about winning or learning so if you do a project or project or if you do do an audition and you don't you know necessarily get the part that you want or you don't even get a part um you haven't exactly lost from that you've learned from it because in reality you, you still do, you still have done the work to get there um because again i maybe not many people know this but there's so much training that goes that gets involved to becoming a professional model as well as a professional actor and you do a lot of work behind the scenes which is kind of like the invisible work that no one sees yeah. and then leading up to a photo shoot or even leading up to an audition you do the work specifically for that again so these are all the things that you know define a a working career of some sort so that's where like the whole um idea of winning and learning comes in it's all about just winning and losing and then if you're just posting pictures on instagram yeah. it well there's no process in that mm -hmm. um there yeah. is a process but it's not really anything so i think the more if people are aware of that then then they can then they know the difference but when people are not aware of it then i guess you can't help it in that sense yeah. yeah i want to ask a question yeah. real quick <laughs> with we know where you are right now just how successful you are um and that's that's a real inspiration right there mm -hmm. just with, where you are and how you saying how hard you worked and you know it wasn't just about you winning but the lessons that you had to learn but i'm pretty sure when you first started off it could have been seen from others as being something that was just like a hobby mm, or yeah. something that was just, you know, just a dream and everything. Did you, did you, did you experience that? And how did you, if you did, how did you like move past it? Um, I did experience that actually. I, you know, but the thing is when you have a passion, especially when you're just starting, you don't really know what you're doing in a sense. The knowledge isn't there. The knowledge comes from training, uh, working with industry professionals, learning from industry professionals. Um, and it, it's a journey. It really is. Um, so it's really funny because most, most of the talented people I know are like me. We have the same idea or belief that there's no such thing as an overnight process. So again, you know, this is just, um, th th this is more of a joke, but at the same time, and, and it's, it's kind of true that the people who do work hard and aren't very talented, mm -hmm. um, yeah, are basically hardworking people and they don't believe in an overnight success. It's the people who don't really believe in hard work that believe in overnight success if that makes sense and that's that's not a good way to look at your career at all but anyway um moving forward um 
the beginning of my career was really just all about passion and doing something for me um, as I came out of a really traumatic experience in my life. Yeah. And therefore, yeah, the very beginning wasn't really about making money or anything like that. And that didn't really come in until later. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, you know, you can't compare like modeling, for example, to investment banking. So I guess you, mm -hmm. you shouldn't expect to have all this money come in within the first six months of modeling. I, I think that is really unrealistic. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's all about knowing what the facts are. And obviously when I just started, in a way I was fortunate not to care so much about the money, but more, just more or less care about myself in the sense that I wanted to do, do something for myself. I wanted to develop myself. And that was um, one of those ways was being done through modeling as I found that so much fun and, and so much, so empowering and creative, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been modeling? You said two years or was was that? Uh, actually five years now. Oh, so, five years. Um, okay. Yeah, five years. So it's it's been a while, but it's been an incredible journey. Um, like, I think it's been like 11 Playboy appearances later. So it's there's been a lot happening. It's been a very incredible journey. Wow. So would what will you say? For someone who wants to get into modeling, is it possible that you can get to get into it later on in um, in the years as you get older, or is it better to start early? If you can start early, by all means, mm -hmm. because you, you have more time. I mean, the way I look at it is, it's not that it's too late to start something. Yeah. It's more that what are you going to do to achieve your dreams? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Um, and then like other people kind of come later, like if, you know, you have an unsupportive group of friends or family that that can be really, um, that can be a big conflict, but everything starts with you. So if you're willing to do the work, not only for the sake of, I, I don't know, money or looking good, but if you're willing to do the work for you, um, that makes a huge difference because then all of a sudden it becomes your journey and your career doesn't become about anyone else and that's i think that's really important because if it becomes about you know anyone else then it's all of a sudden like a game where you're just trying to prove something <laughs> which that doesn't go so far it may for a little while but then it will yeah it will stop at some point so i think like you only live one life so just make the most out of it um and if you find yourself starting modeling or even acting at 30, for example, um, don't be ashamed. Just have this good, smart and positive atti attitude towards it. And even that alone will make a, make a huge difference. Um, because, again, I personally think it's it's not smart to think at any age. Oh, yeah, I'm going to start this now. And in six months time, I'm going to be this famous model or this famous actor or, or something like that like that that to me wouldn't be a a good mindset so yeah it's all to do with you really rather than age and um if you find yourself not in a good environment um because the really funny thing is i was networking with a lot of people and i did come across people who were really passionate about acting for example but they didn't really have the especially after covid they didn't really have the time or funds to even you know get into classes and start training and um yeah i found that i could easily relate to that because once upon a time i wasn't where i am now um but yeah it, it can be really hard for some people when they have the passion but perhaps the circumstances or the opportunities aren't quite you know aren't quite there and yeah, so that can be really hard, but there are ways to move forward. And um, yeah, honestly, it all starts with you. Mm. Mm, that's a so good just answer. Boils, just boils down to, you know, if it, even if it seems small with what you're starting off with or you're not making money from something, just keep believing in yourself is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, like, I think if you were, this is just my opinion, of course, if you were to start modeling, thinking you'd make the same amount of money within six months like an investment banker mm -hmm. you know, that's 
it's completely unrealistic. So yeah. um, you need to kind of have this background knowledge of some sort. Knowledge really helps. Business skills really help as well, I think. Mm -hmm. If you're a good business person, you can actually achieve a lot as a model, as an actor. And people don't think about that, of course. They think, oh, it's a creative art. You're meant to be mm -hmm. uh, talented. But then, like any career or any business, if you look at a shop, for example, that has to maintain um, its, its, its life or its business for a certain period of time. It's, it doesn't all come down to the people who work there who may be I don't know, really good people and really good talented people. That doesn't really get the store going any further. So it's all, if you think of it that way, that it's like a shop or a company which has all these external things to consider and it has to maintain its mm -hmm. its reputation and its business life, then that's the same with your acting and modelling. It's, it's like you need to think of it that way, that it is business that has to be maintained over time. It's not about being someone and just proving yourself to everybody. It's definitely not that. And that's where people, I think, got it wrong. Um, mm. If they did, you know, if they did fail, if they, they did find themselves not going into the right direction, they didn't think of it in that way. Mm. Um, so it's it can be really hard to explain, especially if someone's watching this and they have no idea um or they don't really know a lot about business and that's fine um funny thing is i learned so much about business even just from people or even just from reading um like really good books yeah. so um you can you can easily access information out there without without having to do like some sort of university degree but um in terms of you know just having a a good career that you can maintain that is that is even another story altogether, and that doesn't even come down to how good looking you are, or how good looking you sound, or you know how many friends you have, how popular popular you are. Like I think that's just you know external circumstances that do not really contribute to a a long career. So that's that's how you have to see it. If you're looking, if you're really passionate about something, you will do it or you'll want to do it for the long run. You wouldn't want to just, you know, do it for a year just to oh. grab everybody's attention. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, again, it's all to do with your mindset and what you believe in. And, um, again, you know, just as a reminder, I think a positive mindset is definitely somebody who is passionate about what they do, who cares about what they do, um, and who is smart about it. So, yeah obviously trying to prove yourself to people is not exactly a a smart mindset mm. yeah so you're saying not to be a people pleaser but just to focus on what you want to do with your life yeah exactly i mean it's so funny because if you're trying to prove yourself to someone i mean just imagine it for a second how that would impact you you personally and also impact everything that you're doing over time like having that mindset for two years alone would probably be really really traumatizing in my opinion just having to wake up every day thinking oh my god i gotta do this photo shoot because i want everybody to see this and then like yeah. or something like that and every day if you're waking up thinking like that that's just not <laughs> it's not healthy so it's it, it that's where if you think about it, especially with people who are just doing the, these things for Instagram, mm -hmm. that explains why a lot of those sort of mindset people don't make it so far because, again, you're waking up every day thinking that way and that doesn't, um, that won't last long. <laughs> I hear you. Mm -hmm. So what, you've been in modeling for, you said, five years now. Yeah. And so how like what's the most thing that you enjoy about it now that you've been in it for a while? Um the most thing I enjoy is just doing my craft, as they say, just being there on set, um, mm -hmm. working with like minded people, um, and just having a really good time. Having a productive time, of course, but also having a really good time. Yeah. So and obviously, you know, for some people, 
that I mean for some people that's the same but like when I say that it's like um some people prefer to do swimwear shoots some people prefer mm -hmm. to do lingerie some people prefer to do fashion it all depends what sort of direction you want to go into so there's nothing wrong with that um and for me it has been like personally all genres to be honest um like this year for me I want to focus on a lot of commercial and fashion work especially because I've um, really poured myself into the acting industry mm -hmm. so um that's the direction that I want to go to but see if you asked me two years ago it would have been like I want to do more creative or more yeah more extremely creative work and one of those goals that I had was to pose for the club cover of Playboy which mm -hmm. happened for the first time in 2018 and then I had another two covers since. But you see, like you evolve over time. I think if you stay stationary in the same spot, mm -hmm. it doesn't exactly take you as far. I mean, it depends. It's not that you have to transfer into a different um, area of the industry. You can still do a modeling, but mm -hmm. say if you just wanted to be a model, you didn't want to do acting or anything else, then you know you could you can find ways or you can kind of open your mind and say what what sort of other things can i do in the modeling industry that i haven't done yet and that i want to do because mm -hmm. obviously you wanting to do it makes a huge difference as well <laughs> um there's been so many times and i can even admit for myself where there's been gigs where people have done because of just some sort of other reason or because purely because it's a paid project um and that's fine but as that happens but you probably yeah. don't want to do that all, all the time you probably want to do stuff that you like that you gen genuinely like otherwise yeah even like going on the path of just doing things that you don't like that will that will probably end after a while so yeah it's it's important to have a good mindset mm. yes a positive mindset that's what we need right yeah you know that's that's the that's the key right there. Yeah. All right. So, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you're a model, we know you're a model and you are um, doing at some acting. So what are some other aspirations you have? There's a, there's a lot to be honest. I mean, one of the biggest things for me this year was to um, empower myself. And I don't mean empower myself to prove to anyone. I mean, just purely for me. So I have been studying um, a, a business certificate this year, which has been a lot of fun. I, I surprisingly found that really easy. And I think because there's, there were so many similarities in the course mm -hmm. yeah. that I had with my own modeling career. So I was like, oh, wow, that's funny. <laughs> um, because it talks about working with people and it talks about obviously more in depth the specifics about that and so everything i was reading i could relate to to a certain extent and that was that was very good but it was also very interesting so it goes to show there's a difference between having a career of some sort and just i don't know taking photos just to impress somebody so there's a huge difference um and yeah so i'm focusing on on business this year i'm focusing on just building my network because I found that just because somebody's in the same industry as me doesn't mean we're like-minded because yeah. I feel that, you know, the human mind is complicated anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, everyone's different in their own way. And I found myself having um, things in common with people who weren't necessarily models. Mm -hmm. um, and the really funny thing is, because I went to, it was virtual, but I went to the Actors Pro Expo this year and they had over 3,000 people apparently from all of the world attend. And everyone I was networking with personally, I found we all, yeah, we all were, were into acting, of course, mm -hmm. but we also had this similar drive. And I, I, and I liked that. I was like, okay, I want to connect with you people. We're going right. to follow each other on Instagram and just mm -hmm. stay in touch. So I found that really interesting. So um, for me, networking and having some sort of environment of like-minded people was very, very important to me because I felt if I, uh, um, I learned this the hard way, by the way, but I found out, especially within the last year, you know, COVID kind of gave me 
a reality check, but I think it did for everybody, which is which is a good thing. Um, that your environment really plays a huge role. Like, yes, it all comes down to you, right? That's the first and foremost when you're trying to achieve something. But your environment does as well. So if you don't really have like-minded people around you, they don't have to be in the same industry as you. They can just be passionate and positive-minded people and they could be doing something else. But that's still a good thing. So for me, it was like, if I can network, if I can get to know people that are kind of like me and we, we both, we're we're all um, passionate, we're all driven and we all believe in, in good things, then that whole concept alone is, is a very empowering thing. I mean, it sounds so simple when I say it, but when you actually practice it in real life, it's, it's a very good thing. So for me, like connecting with positive minded people was um yeah very important to me because i wanted to kind of i just wanted to like move on forward and just get to know people that were kind of on this on that same mind level and that can be like a huge thing coming from me because a lot of people assume when somebody makes it so far that they won't talk to certain people which sounds really narcissistic (laughs) To be honest, and I think that's bad, by the way, because that goes to show what kind of person that individual is. So, um, yeah, for me, it was like, yeah, definitely building a good environment as well as working on myself. So they they sound like simple goals, but I think they're going to be very good ones. Wow. Well, yeah, definitely. Wow. Mm-hmm. So when sometimes uh, when I was young, I would glance by and my mom would be watching some Lifetime movie. And I think one of the movies was like Angelina Jolie. And I think yeah. the movie was called Gia. And it was a biography about a model. And she mm-hmm. was going to do some different things. And then some of the other movies would be about models. But some of the models, they would get uh, they would get abused. But they, mm-hmm. it was from somebody that they was uh, started dating from photographers or it was their manager Mm -hmm. um and i just wanted to know like was there any cases where you saw that you know from somebody or have you ever been through that yourself you know and how you know how you know how 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 have you ever seen that before before you get into that i wanted to share some um information Mm -hmm. about um domestic violence to get some statistics before we get into this topic. So in the United States, um, I found information. It's an article by the New England Journal of Medicine, and it's an article called A Pandemic Within a Pandemic, Intimate Partner Violence During COVID-19. So we're right, we're going we're going to be focusing on women particularly getting um abused, but of course you can be no matter what your age or sex is or uh, where you come from that anybody can get abused. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're focusing on today. And intimate partner violence is just another word for domestic violence, um, just if you didn't know. So, but um, they said in the United States for last year, one in four women and one in 10 men experience uh, IPV. And violence can take various forms. It can be physical, emotional, sexual, or psychological. Um, and it says that people of all races, cultures, genders, sexual orientations, socioeconomic classes, and religious religions experience IPV. So it is anybody can experience this. And um, I just wanted to um, give those st- statistics. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's huge. I think they did say a similar thing at one stage in Australia. I don't know about the past year or so. Um, yeah, that's yeah very not good to hear um going back to the question um yeah i've known so many people who've been through some sort of domestic violence and again as you mentioned it can be physical emotional um can be abusive in any in another way like even financial um and for me yeah so that experience or that bad experience that i had before I went into modeling was um, domestic violence. So I was with somebody who was 
Well, clearly not in a good headspace because the older I get, the more I think, well, I actually didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. um, for me to do something wrong or for anyone to do something wrong in any sort of situation, even if it's like family violence or friendship, um, would be for you to actually do something wrong to the other person physically, emotionally, et cetera. Um, but if you're not doing anything and they're just doing that to you, sometimes as a victim, you, you think to yourself, geez, what did I say to them that was like bad or what, you know? And I know that because that was me. And, um, but that's completely wrong. You see, like people can be doing things for so many reasons. And a lot of those are kind of, internal and external reasons so they could have themselves had a bad upbringing they could have something wrong within themselves here it could be so many different reasons and you may not even be one of them or you may be just one or two of those reasons and everything else is just them them and their personal issues um, but nevertheless that is no excuse for domestic violence nobody should have to feel unsafe or in any way belittled or devalued, especially not from a physical point of view, um, that is, you know, being be beaten up and stuff like that. So nobody should ever feel like that. That's just wrong 100, no, 200%. Mm -hmm. So going back to what I experienced, I was experiencing, I mean, there was a bit of physical abuse. There was mainly more emotional abuse there was a bit of sexual abuse as well and i was experiencing that and i was feeling completely devalued devalued and unfortunately at the time um not many people know knew about it not even the people in the friendship group or however you want to word it at that time and i was really young i was 20 to 21 i hadn't even done modeling or anything like what i'm doing now by the way so that was a very enclosed time in my life. Like I was depressed, I was anxious, I felt just locked or trapped and everything else wasn't even in my mindset. I wasn't even thinking about doing modeling and, and doing all these amazing things that I could be doing. Instead, I was trapped in that situation and just didn't know much or know any better. Um, of course, that changed and, um, going back to yeah people that were around us um it was really sad because i remember at the time and again you know people can think of any reason why this could be but i always say it comes down to people having personal internal issues and you know other reasons that have nothing to do with me or to do with the victim and i think there were like two people that kind of supported my abuser and i was like well, it was hurtful at first, but, you know, I got over it really quickly at that point um, because when I realised that things were actually bad and when I did go, when I did actually go to court um, very early that morning, and there's a story for, behind that as well, but I won't go into it too much. Mm. Um, like I was already given by that stage the advice by the it was a local organization here i think it was the the domestic crisis violence line for women i think something along those those lines that's what they were called but anyway they supported women that were going through domestic violence and they were telling me a lot of things prior um that what i was going through was just not on like they explained to me and they were really, they were very friendly, but they were also very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot just from even talking to them. And I just remember thinking, well, this isn't right. Whilst I didn't know everything and whilst I didn't, whilst I still felt a little bit unconfident, I have to admit, I knew it wasn't right. And that's where I went ahead and did a um, d domestic violence order. And mm -hmm. things kind of progressed in that process from there. And years later, I look back and I say, that's the best thing that I could have done. Like I, whilst I was not the strongest person or I didn't feel that way at the time, mm -hmm. I was so confident that what was happening to me, especially after the conversation with that organization, 
that what I was going through was not okay. It was completely wrong. Mm. And I think that goes to show in any situation, it doesn't even have to be domestic violence. It could be bullying of some sort. It could be something else. You may not feel at the time that you are, I don't know, empowered or that you are um, strong or something along those lines. But if you're confident that what being is done to you is not okay, well, then that's then that's it. You know, you don't you shouldn't have to be this super powerful person and or feel that way in order to get justice, um, especially if you are in domestic violence and you have been severely abused. Of course, you're not going to feel like the strongest person in the world. If anything, you'll still feel like a victim. Um, and then when you get out of it, that's when you will, will feel more like a survivor. Mm. So, yeah, that's something I really want, wanted to address because I know that's happened to me so many times where I did not feel that strong, but I was so sure, I was so confident that what was being, what was happening was just not, was just not on. It was unacceptable. So I'm glad that I made that decision because, you know, I got, myself out with with help out of a very bad situation that could have just destroyed my life i would not be here talking to you guys or even doing anything that i'm doing if i hadn't have done that wow. so um it goes to show that one simple decision can go a long way and you may not see the effects of it straight away but then again i think that goes back to the story of nothing happens overnight no big success happens overnight it's just it's just a physical impossibility but everything that you do matters so if you want to have a better life whether you're in domestic violence or not you have to make the decisions to basically have that happen um and then over time you'll be like oh great you know i'm in this I'm in a good situation. I have a good environment um, of people around me. I'm doing the things that I'm like, and that's what matters. Um, anything else doesn't really matter when you think about it. Um, and I think like, yeah, there's all it's again, it's obviously easier said than done, but once you have a very strong mindset and you're certain about what you want and what you deserve, then you can move forward from there. Um, so yeah, it was a very traumatic time. Um, I was feeling depressed, anxious, very uncertain about myself, very unconfident. Mm -hmm. And I just had to power through that and make those decisions. And I'm very thankful to have had the support by um, police and of course the organization that helped me. So it's, mm -hmm. it's good that there is justice within, you know, not only people, but within the system itself. Mm -hmm. So very, um, yeah, I, I hold a lot of gratitude towards that and there's so many things that you can do to improve your life and yeah i just wanted to put that out there um but also yeah if you're in domestic violence just get out of there even if it's even if it is say for example only emotional mm -hmm. but why should you deserve to wake up every morning and have someone tell you terrible things mm -hmm. like it just sounds absurd you know mm -hmm. um no one should have to go through that. Yeah. So yeah, just oh. I got one question <laughs> okay. before you give you give that yeah, last. I was going to give an example of of a movie that shows domestic violence, but you can go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't mm -hmm. keep. Well, I guess keep that thought then. Oh yeah, yeah. You can go. <laughs> um, I was going to ask if there if are there any early on in the relationship for people who are out there are there like any red flags or or does it just come out of kind of come out of nowhere? Um. It's hard to explain. Okay. And I know this because I obviously remembered what um, I went through with that particular person in domestic violence. But the funny thing is because when you, when you do what I'm doing, it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be modeling, but when you travel and you meet sort of people, you can kind of get an idea of who's insecure and who isn't. You, you can tell. And I remember learning this in acting especially when you had to be a really powerful actor and yeah. it made so much sense because again it, it was so it was so bizarre because it was so similar to what i had learned um after i did counseling you know doing going through domestic violence and it was like 
it's not so much what they say, but it's their behavior. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that for a second recently when I was doing my acting classes and I thought about it obviously back then and I was like, that makes so much sense. So if they don't say anything bad and obviously a good example would be like, oh, you're a terrible person, I'm going to hit you. You know, that's that's an obvious sign of somebody, you know, especially if they go ahead with it after mm -hmm. saying it, that's an obvious sign of something, oh, this these are red flags. Mm -hmm. But you know behavior itself can be really hard to pick up especially if you're in love with a person and you're like you're with them you're living with them it's like you don't want to be thinking oh this this person is terrible but the, the the truth of the matter is there's no such thing as a perfect person so there will always be times in our lives when we as people behave and not the best way but then of course there's a there's a big difference between violence and just not being a nice person right <laughs> so going back to the behavior side of things it's like their behavior so their actual actions what they do will end up being more of a sign than anything else so say for example if you were living with somebody and every night they would not really talk to you in fact the only thing they would communicate with you would be like just about stuff that had to be done around the house, right? Mm -hmm. And the other time, they're just not talking to you. So their behavior would then indicate that there's something else going on. And it could just be that they're not really interested in having a quality relationship with you because a quality relationship, last time I checked, involves a lot of communi communication and spending time together. Mm -hmm. So their behavior of not really talking to you and only talking to you when it comes to say money or um something to do with other responsibilities that behavior should indicate that there's something wrong you know even if they haven't said it you know does that make sense so it was really interesting how like i came across that twice or a few times in my life i was like but and it's like that example when um oh my gosh this is a really funny one i laugh about it because well, I laugh about it because I think it's a bit funny, but that's just me being a a positive person. But, you know, it's like when you meet somebody for the first time and they say, hey, how are you? And you say that back. But you, for some reason, I mean, and it's not someone you know, maybe it's someone that somebody else introduced you to. And or like you guys have a mutual friend, but you guys don't really know each other. And you're you're there in that room or wherever you are and you meet them, but you can just totally tell by the vibe or their the way their body's positioned or the expression on their face and you're like you're not really happy to meet me like you're thinking that in your head and it's like <laughs> like you can just tell and it's just it's kind of funny um so but see that's an that's an example of people's behavior and again like you aren't the only reason and sometimes you aren't the reason at all why somebody is so negative because the re the, I mean, I think mo one of the biggest reasons why people are so negative is when they're insecure themselves. Like they're going through something and therefore they just feel ugly. Mm -hmm. And then therefore they might be ugly towards other people. So it's really funny how you don't really play that much of a role in that situation. It's really other stuff more than you. Um, so i think behavior is a really big indicator that something is wrong mm -hmm. and obviously in domestic violence there's more of a risk than you know just meeting people in everyday life but the i guess you know if you can identify that something's wrong even if you don't believe that person's going to be violent then that's a good sign because you don't want to be as I said in the other example you don't want to be with somebody who doesn't care about you and doesn't really want to spend quality time with you that's just not a good thing um so yeah i hope that does help definitely did you did you have you still yeah have so i i don't know if you guys ever heard of a movie with jennifer lopez is the main character's name it's called enough and it shows mm -hmm. i don't know if you ever seen it but it shows where like the stages of like you mean someone who's in how domestic violent cases are sometimes so like I love the movie because at the end she like gets him back and like, you know, um, she um trains herself, you know, to protect herself. So I think that's that's a good movie 
to like watch to see how it plays out. But um, with that being said, like I just used that as an example because she used um, defense. She defended herself by, you know, um, protecting herself by yeah. actually fighting back. So that's one yeah, way uh, you that can. Was, that was physical. Well, yeah, it's physical, yeah. but yeah, that could be a little tricky though. With the if you're physical, because there's a lot that goes into it. Like mm -hmm. they be like, oh, well, why are you? If you, I mean, I I use, I watch a lot of. I've seen a lot of like, what's the crime cases with women killing their husband, mm -hmm. end up in jail because they had to defend themselves. Anyways, that's a whole like the it depends. But um, what are some ways women can get out of a domestic violence relationship? Um, definitely seek help. Because, like I said, especially in domestic violence, um, you're, not, you're not necessarily going to be the most confident or strongest person in that situation. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you do need help, especially if you were, you know, being severely um, damaged through abuse. You don't want to be going through that. So getting help is very important. And sometimes, again, that's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. so but yeah for example if you don't know anyone mm -hmm. that you can trust like a friend or family member then going doing your research and knowing what organizations out there is a good start mm -hmm. um i don't know this personally because my situation was slightly different but if you were on the phone or if you had seen in person somebody a representative for one of these organizations and your situation was that bad uh, chances are that they would probably advise you to get out of there instantly and the police would be called. Mm -hmm. So, again, so, sometimes it can be easier said than done, but you need to know what's right for you. And yeah. here's like a little interesting thing. In those situations, you yourself know your partner better than anyone else. So if your life is at risk and you want to get out of there, you know, you can think about it for a moment and then you can take the necessary steps. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot of things that you can do and there's a lot of help that you can get out there. So that's a really big thing, getting help. And that might actually be a simple call to the police. So it might not be going all the way and asking different people for help. It might just be, yeah, calling um, the police straight away. So definitely do that getting help is extremely important and there will always be someone there to help you. Um, there always will be. So that's something I really had to learn the hard way because going through what I did, I really felt extremely lonely and I felt that there was no one there that genuinely cared. And obviously that was an, more of a, an effect after going through what I did, mm -hmm. but it's not the truth. Um, there will always be somebody who does want to help you and who can. Um, and, yeah, that's very important to know. What advice would you give um, a, um, a woman who may be afraid to get out of the um, situation, afraid of their abuser? Well, how can they get, you know, get help if they're afraid? Like yeah, because um, they are afraid they can't get out because of fear. Like fear may, plays a major role in those cases. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's um, it, it can be a very tough one to figure out because obviously if your life's at huge risk, mm -hmm. then, you know, any step from there is a risk that you take. But in saying that, that doesn't mean you should go, shouldn't get help mm -hmm. because there's a, there's a time and a place for everything. So if you have to, if you found yourself in a situation where you actually had to sneak out, for example, then mm. I suppose that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's it's really hard because some situations are really intense, and I'm not I'm not exactly a um, you know uh, somebody who has knowledge mm -hmm. of self defense or any of those situations where you literally have to escape. So my words are really just more generalized. But, yeah, if you're in a situation, then you have to get specific help, I should say. And yeah. sometimes that specific help is really just calling the police because you feel so scared, like you said before, that you can't find any other way of getting out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it is just that, um, based on what I've I've heard. Um and yeah, 
yeah, unfortunately, there's more. There are a lot of bad situations out there, but I, I would still hold the belief that there's help out there for you because if you don't seek help, then you're never going to get it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's a shame that we have to, that we have this in the world and yeah. it's hard. It's hard and like heartbreaking. I, I've done some research in domestic violence and it's just, it's just bad. And I always hear like something going on with domestic violence, some type of something in the news. That's why I don't watch news like that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, this, wow. it's, it's, it's a horrible thing, but I think Jasmine, you're a, a great example of, yeah. um, not just going through that and living through that, mm -hmm. but just becoming who you are and um, getting through your dreams is hard enough. Somebody um, doing something like modeling that's not um, per se a job, but something that is a dream that you actually accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, that alone is a, a great a, a great feat to accomplish. Um, and on the you know tail end of going through what you went through, that's you know even more of an accomplishment on top of that so we we just um we just want to thank you for sharing your story on today mm -hmm. and just want to you know encourage you that you're you're an encouragement to a lot of women out there and everything we just want to thank you just for being uh on, on the episode today uh today, mm -hmm. today was a privilege to have you on yes so where can people find you and what um do you have any projects coming like coming up with you know with acting? Um, yeah, it's it's really funny because I've been working a lot and um it's good when you're working a lot because a lot of people recognize you. So I have been um offered to be part of a few projects. Um so yeah, hopefully all goes well and that will um that will all happen. Um moving forward though, I've been working in Sorry, I've been doing a lot of acting and modeling work behind the scenes, or the invisible work, as they call it. But yeah. funny enough, the invisible work is usually the most important work that you do. So there's another tip or advice for people listening to this. Yeah. And, yeah, I've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. I've been training a lot with my acting. Um, at the moment, I'm, like, doing, what, like, three classes a week and just really getting to my craft. Um I'm studying business. I'm preparing for upcoming photo shoots as well. And yeah, so things have really been a journey. Um, there is like a, like a short film festival that they do here locally. It's not, you know, it's not universally known, but it was a lot of fun because I got to do two roles um, in that. And I just had an amazing experience on set. And even just that is part of the, the process or part of the work as, as they call it. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited. There's so much, um, there's so many things happening. And um, it's really funny because in my previous radio interviews, I was promoting um, the sales of autographed Playboy magazines. I had, um, yeah, I had, a, I had a lot to sell. And yeah, they've been sold out since January last year. So <laughs> they're all gone. Um, I am selling calendars at the moment. So people or fans can purchase a Playboy calendar for 2021. Um, otherwise, yeah, if you head over to my social media pages on Facebook and Instagram, I'm Jasmine Shojai Model. On Twitter, I'm Jasmine underscore Shojai. Um, and I do have a daily motion channel where I have a lot of my behind the scenes videos. I also have my little like mini reality web series, which documents my journey. So that's under, um, that's on the daily motion and that's under Jasmine Shojai TV. So um, fans or new fans can expect to see a lot of different work um, coming from my end. Um, as I said, there's a lot of invisible work coming along. So mm -hmm. you'll, people will probably see a lot of like highlights or specific things that I'm working on. Um, they'll see my monologues that I'm working on for acting, which is so, so much fun, by the way, really getting into the whole creative process. So there's a lot to expect. Um, it is coming around on a good pace. Um, but like I said, I'm definitely one of those people who doesn't believe in overnight success. I think you have to work to get to a certain point. Um, 
And again, believe it or not, I think if you are going to become an international actress or an international model, by the way, then the work has to happen. Um, and a good example of that for me was I didn't do my first Playboy cover, um, although I had done appearances before. I didn't do my first Playboy cover, nor did I do a lot of um, these, you know, incredible photo shoots that I've been doing mm -hmm. until I traveled. And that was back in 2018. And I already had been modeling for two to two and a half years but mm -hmm. see how that progressed if that ma if that makes sense so it happened over time and that's the most important thing remembering that success that that um pace is not the definition of of, of success mm -hmm. you if somebody does for example make it somewhere in six months well then you know you as an individual you can say okay good for them but this is my journey this is my pace and as long as you know that nothing is an overnight overnight process then you're going to be on the right path and i mean personally i think that i remember reading this somewhere and it was like if something is that great if something is truly that amazing mm -hmm. then it shouldn't it wouldn't really happen that quickly you know, in in the idea of success or career or something that you're creating, like if you're part of a certain project. Yeah. So that was something that I learned. And I was like, I thought about that and I thought that, well, that makes perfect sense. If something is that wonderful, something is that great, then it would take time to make it happen or it would, it would take time to get there. So I, I think of that as a positive thing because sometimes when I'm feeling less confident or I'm a bit down, I think, I think of that as a positive thing because I'm thinking, well, if this is really that wonderful, then that's why it is taking time. That's that's why I'm on this journey. Um, so yeah, that's another positive point of view. Wow. Yeah, that's how we feel about our podcast. <laughs> like, you know, we we building this and working towards it, you know, and it's going to take time, but it's something great at the end of the the journey. It's going to be something great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Jasmine, we want to thank you again for coming on the mm -hmm. show. It's just been wonderful. We really yes. thank you for your time and the opportunity to speak with you about modeling and overcoming your dreams and how to get to your dreams and overcoming you a know, traumatic experience. Traumatic yeah. yeah. Don't let that hold you back, you know? And yeah. because like you said, we have, we only have one life to live Yeah, and, you know, go after your dreams, despite what anybody say. Definitely. Right. So go after you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. Definitely go after your dreams. And dream. I think something else I thought I should say is, um, yeah. whilst people can say stuff about you, um, your opinions matter first because i i feel that you need to take ownership of your life right mm -hmm. so therefore why should anyone come first to you you know what i mean like it's your life it's your career it's your your goals it's your sweat and tears going into something what you think matters most mm -hmm. so you come first and then anything else can come later mm -hmm. um so that's that's where i think it can be hard to do but then that's an example of taking ownership whilst you're admitting that you're not the most perfect person in the world which is a good which is a good thing i think because there's no such thing as perfection and i think if you were to think that you were like oh the super amazing person it sounds really self-indulgent so you don't want to be thinking that way but you want to be thinking that okay what i think matters first then anything else comes later mm -hmm. i shouldn't like yourself shouldn't come second to what people think because that's really devaluing mm -hmm. um so that's something very important as well yeah wow yeah, yeah. that was good mm -hmm. that is good well, well ho hopefully you know um in the future maybe we can even have you back on we can talk about something else yeah that'd be nice <laughs> yeah definitely we we'll found something. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And coming, repping, you're repping Australia, which is pretty cool. I've never been there, yeah. but I want to do some more we gotta traveling. We gotta come yeah, we got to come visit. 
<laughs> Sounds like a plan. And yeah, I, I plan to go to America when everything opens up again. So wow. um, fingers yeah. crossed. I have been doing a lot of um, communication with people overseas there, actually, because um, the, the expo, for example, had people from all over the world and a lot of people, a lot of people were from the US. So that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the future. Hmm. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, this is gonna... <laughs> I was looking like you know what I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of I was looking like <laughs> this. You was looking That's like you funny. wanted to. You wanted to. No, I was waiting for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but this has been another episode of CJ Honesty. Honesty. Bye. Peace. See ya. If you or someone you know may be experiencing a domestic violence situation, you can call this number for, for the United States National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233, or you can visit their website at www.ncadv.org slash get dash help. For Australia Hotline, you can call at 1-800-737-732 or you can visit their website at www.1800respect.org.au.